Do you know about Srimavasa Iyengar Ramanujan? A century ago, this man who had no formal training in mathematics, made equations that explain the theory of black holes, when there was not even a concept of black holes existed in scientific community. He made significant contributions to number of theory, infinite series, continued fractions, mathematical analysis, and many more. In 2015, the British cinema made a biographical film of Ramanujan, named The Man Who Knew the Infinity. Not just the black holes, he made equations for many things which were not even considered possible at that time. And when asked about those equations, he simply said that his god, Nama Giri Thayer, gave it to him. He also often used to say, an equation for me has no meaning, unless it expresses a thought of my god. His work had a profound impact on various branches of mathematics and continues to influence research to this day. Ramanujan's life and achievements are celebrated worldwide, and he is often regarded as one of the greatest mathematicians of all time. And today, I'm going to share with you the real life story about this great Indian mathematician, who knew the infinity. This story begins in the early 20th century, and this is the story of a time when India was under British rule, when the Indians were slaves to the British. Ramanujan was not formally educated and did not have any degrees, yet he had a great interest in mathematics. He would often solve mathematical problems on the temple walls. However, he was in search of a job, because he was married, and he needed to earn money. And in this regard, he approaches a man, and he shows him his research in mathematics. He is an Englishman, and he tells him, we will definitely recommend you for this. Ramanujan says, I am already married, and I have a recommendation, I need a job. And he insults him and throws him out from there. Ramanujan is very poor and needs money to run his household, which is why he must find a job. But he doesn't have any degrees, so no one wants to give him a job. And even after getting married, due to poverty, he has to share a place to sleep with his friend. The following day, Ramanujan goes to another place and shows his mathematical research to a man. His name is Narayana. Narayana is quite impressed after seeing his research. And he takes him to Sir Francis for whom he works. And he tells him, this man is our new clerk. Upon seeing Ramanujan's condition, Mr. Francis remarks, seems like this man belongs in the gutters, take him away from here. However, Ramanujan says that he excels with numbers, and right now he may seem like just a shard of glass to them, but soon they will realize that he is not just a shard of glass but a diamond. And Ramanujan speaks this way because he has a lot of confidence in his calculations, his mathematics, and himself. And after that, Ramanujan finally secures a job. Following this, he rents a house for his mother and his wife, so that they can all live together. And his mother and wife arrive there. There was only one bed, so he tells his wife, I'll sleep on the floor, I'm used to it. You and mom will sleep on the bed. And then Ramanujan goes to work. When he works and does calculations, he doesn't use the abacus. Abacus is an ancient type of calculator. And when Mr. Narayana asks him why he doesn't use it, he says that he can calculate faster in his mind. This impresses Mr. Narayana greatly, but he tells him that when Sir Francis comes here, at least pretend to use it so that he thinks you're using it. After working for few days, Ramanujan's boss realizes that he is a milestone, he is very talented. He tells him, I will introduce your work to someone out of India. And when Ramanujan tells his mother and his wife about the possibility of going abroad, his wife is happy about it. But his mother says, it's not possible, we are Brahmins, and we cannot cross the sea. Ramanujan feels dismayed by his mother's statement. But Narayana, who works with him, tells him that his work should not die with him, it's extraordinary and he should publish it. And Ramanujan sends some copies of his work to G. H. Hardy, a famous mathematician at the University of Cambridge. And G. H. Hardy is very impressed with Ramanujan's work. He takes a keen interest in his work, so much so that he invites him to England. And when Ramanujan tells this to his wife, she expresses her reluctance, saying that she is opposed to it, as they are Brahmins, they cannot cross the sea. She fears that if he does this, so their children will not find any suitable marriages and no one will talk to them. Ramanujan says, it doesn't matter to me if someone talks to me or not, but you should talk to me. His wife says, promise me that once you go there, you will take me there as soon as possible. Ramanujan says, all right. And now Ramanujan needs to cut his shika, and he tells his wife, cut it off. Actually, shika is a tuft of hair kept at the back of the head by a Hindu following tonsure. Though traditionally considered to be an essential mark of a Hindu, it is primarily worn among Brahmins, especially those serving as temple priests. However, today this may seem commonplace, but at the beginning of the 20th century, Brahmins could not cut their shika. But Ramanujan tells his wife to cut it, and his wife proceeds to cut his hair. Upon seeing his hair, Ramanujan's mother is very saddened, because for a Brahmin, having one's hair cut means being disgraced in society. But still, his mother supports him, and when Ramanujan is about to leave for England, his mother tells him never forget to prayers and not to eat impure food, not to eat any kind of non-vegetarian food. 
and then Ramanujan bids farewell to his wife and his mother. And now Ramanujan has reached the prestigious University of Cambridge in England from the city of Madras in India, where every studious child in the world wants to study. In the decision to invite Ramanujan to Cambridge University, G. H. Hardy was not supported by any lecturers or professors. They all think Ramanujan is lying because he hasn't provided any proof for the details and formulas he sent. Ramanujan meets G. H. Hardy and Hardy tells him, let's meet tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock so we can proceed with our work. The following day, Ramanujan goes to G. H. Hardy's room, and today he did not wear shoes, instead, he is wearing sandals because he is not accustomed to wearing shoes. Here, John Edenser Littlewood also comes. Littlewood works with G. H. Hardy. And now G. H. Hardy tells Ramanujan that you will have to attend some lectures because whatever your theory is, you will have to prove it so that this work can reach the world and can be explained to everyone in simple language. Ramanujan informs him, the letter I previously sent indicated that what I'm providing is merely a glimpse of my work, I possess a wealth of additional material that I am willing to share with you. And then he gives them a notebook in which he has written many formulas and theories of mathematics. And when G. H. Hardy and Littlewood see it, they are amazed. Then Ramunujan takes out another notebook and says, I have one more. And this contains all of Ramunujan's own discoveries. The following day, Ramanujan goes to a class where a mathematical theorem is written on the blackboard. And the lecturer asks Ramanujan, do you understand? He replies, yes, I understand. The lecturer then says, but you haven't taken any notes. If you understand, then solve it. In just a few moments, Ramanujan solves the theorem. The lecturer asks, how did you do it when I hadn't completed the proof of the theorem, how did you know? Ramanujan replies, I don't know, I just did it. After that, the lecturer concludes the class and tells Ramanujan, don't ever do this again in my class, just leave. He then dismisses Ramanujan from there, where Ramanujan should have received appreciation for his work, instead, he is insulted, which deeply saddens him due to this discrimination. Afterwards, when Ramanujan goes to G. H. Hardy, Hardy asks him, how did you know the answer to that theorem written on the blackboard by the lecturer? Ramanujan says that it came to my mind automatically, I don't know anything. He says, I don't understand why we are wasting our time looking for proof when I already have the formulas. G. H. Hardy says, I can see all your work, and I understand its value, but for others to understand and appreciate it, we need proofs. Then G. H. Hardy escorts him out and shows him a book by Newton, explaining that Newton's book guides them because every statement in it has a proof in detail, unlike Ramanujan's books which lack detail and proof for his discoveries. Hardy tells Ramanujan that they need proofs for everything he claims to have discovered. Authentic reasoning is crucial for Ramanujan's work to be accepted by the mathematical community. Hardy's words resonate with Ramanujan, and thereafter, he immerses himself in his work, bringing proofs for some theorems. However, there are errors in some, and Mr. Hardy assists him. Following this, Ramanujan's first mathematical discovery gets published, and his photo appears in newspapers, reaching even India, bringing great joy to his wife and mother. Now, everything was going well when suddenly the war broke out in England. Ramanujan sends a letter to his wife informing her about the commencement of the war. He writes in the letter that war has started in England, so it would not be right for her to come to England. John Key makes up her mind to go to England, and to inform Ramanujan about this decision she writes him a letter that never reaches him, because his mother hides it. Ramanujan's mother believes that if Ramanujan's wife goes to England, so Ramanujan will never return to India. Now, due to the war in England, Littlewood also wants to participate in the war, who works with G. H. Hardy. And Littlewood really likes Ramanujan because he knows his capabilities. Before leaving, he writes a letter to G. H. Hardy saying, You have Ramanujan with you. He is nothing short of a miracle and we shouldn't compare him to Jacobi. Jacobi was a great mathematician of his time. Littlewood suggests that they should compare Ramanujan to Newton instead of Jacobi. Now, Ramanujan is your responsibility. You have to take care of him, and whatever work he has should come before the world. J. H. Hardy also helps Ramanujan in every possible way because he knows that Ramanujan is a milestone and he can transcend all boundaries of mathematics. Anyway, Ramanujan wasn't treated well in the context of the war. He is even beaten by the local police. Nevertheless, Ramanujan continues to work in this environment. Gradually, Ramanujan's health begins to deteriorate, and when he gets his checkup done by the doctor, the doctor tells him that he has tuberculosis. However, Ramanujan doesn't tell this to G. H. Hardy. Along with this, G. H. Hardy's appeal for Ramanujan to become a member of the Royal Society is also rejected. Ramanujan is surrounded by troubles from all sides, his health is deteriorating, his application is rejected, and he has no contact with his wife. All of these things frustrate him greatly, and he goes to the railway station and jumps in front of the train, but before he comes under the train, the train conductor sees him and stops the train. 
After this, Ramanujan is taken to the hospital, and there G. H. Hardy also arrives. Now G. H. Hardy gets to know that Ramanujan has tuberculosis, and he won't survive for many more days. Doctors inform that now no one can save Ramanujan. If anyone can save him, it's only hopes. Besides that, there is no cure for him. Meanwhile, Hardy is completely unaware of the many hardships going on in Ramanujan's life. He tells him, if you had told me earlier, perhaps I could have helped in some way. I am not a good friend. I never was. My life is only mathematics, nothing else. After this, Ramanujan tells Hardy, do you know where I get new ideas in mathematics from? Hardy responds, where? Ramanujan says, all the idea comes from my God. He talks to me when I sleep, when I wake up, when I pray. He puts all those formulas in my mind. Do you believe in God? G. H. Hardy responds, I don't believe in God. I don't believe in anything I can't prove, but I believe in you. Ramanujan thanks him and says, I want to finish that work as soon as possible which I have started, and after that, I want to go back to my country, my home. Promise me that wherever I die, you will take me back to my home. G. H. Hardy says, you are not going to die so soon. Ramanujan, though sick and weak, continues to work on the proofs of the partition theory of numbers. He completes his work, astonishing even the greatest mathematicians and lecturers at Cambridge University, because Ramanujan's work is unparalleled, and no one even believed that he could complete it. Now, G. H. Hardy once again wishes for Ramanujan to receive the fellowship of the Royal Society, and this time he is granted the fellowship, however, there are still some individuals who do not wish for Ramanujan to receive this fellowship, because he is Indian. However, through the efforts of G. H. Hardy, he is honored with this recognition, which becomes a significant achievement in his life. For this, Ramanujan is highly respected there, and this respect comes from those individuals who are greats in their respective fields. And after this, Ramanujan bids farewell to G. H. Hardy because he wants to return to his country. G. H. Hardy feels very sad about this because he doesn't want Ramanujan to leave. He wants him to work with him, but Ramanujan needs to go to his family. Therefore Ramanujan returns to India, his homeland. But, upon his return, he is unable to overcome his illness, and within a year of returning, he passes away. And when G. H. Hardy receives the news of Ramanujan's death, he is deeply saddened because he has lost a very significant part of his life, a very important friend. He was greatly influenced by Ramanujan's personality and the originality of his work. But now, Ramanujan is no longer in this world. At the age of only 32, Ramanujan left this world. But the work Ramanujan accomplished in the world of mathematics will be remembered by the world forever. In 1920, Ramanujan passed away, but in 1976, one of his lost notebooks was discovered. It contained groundbreaking formulas, and today, those formulas are used to understand the behavior of black holes. He formulated these equations in the final years of his life. Ramanujan and G. H. Hardy worked together for five years, and the work they did can never be forgotten in their lifetimes. Ramanujan is even compared to John Eliot Drinkwater Bethune. So, this was the story of Srimavasa Iyengar Ramanujan. Hopes you enjoyed it.